Okay, what we have here is approximately 9 ounces of ProSet 117LV and 226 hardener. Uh, it's typically used for infusion. We're going to be doing an infusion of two panels. Uh, they're going to be cut up for testing later. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm just stirring the hardener and the resin together. I'm going to infuse the 090 first and the plus minus 45 second. Uh, you can see on these I'm using AirTech Green Flow Media, also some release coated peel ply. I'm using a vinyl bag with a, a yellow sticky tape, um, generally referred to um, as AT200Y by General Sealant. Uh, you can see I have spiral wrap on both sides of each plate and you can see that each tube coming in is clamped off. What I'm doing right now is I'm stirring the resin very thoroughly and I'm trying to avoid to get bubbles in it because the bubbles will end up as porosity inside the final part. So I'm going to stir this for a little longer and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the tube into the resin and once I do that I'm going to release the the clamp and once the clamp goes the resin should start to flow. You can see that I have some breather material right here that leads all the way over to where the vacuum inlet is. Um, I'm not using a, a catch can for excess resin uh, just simply because I don't plan on getting in, inside the tube. Uh, this is a fairly precise and small piece and the amount of resin being used is, is fairly well known which isn't always the case the first time you do a part. So it looks like our resin is thoroughly mixed. What I'm going to do is put the tube in while still holding on to this. Put this in here and you can see as soon as I open the tube up we have resin flow. If I get this out of the way, you can start to see the resin is already flowing. It's fairly cool out here, uh, probably about 60 degrees, which isn't particularly ideal, but it's not a problem uh, because I will be wrapping these in a warm blanket after I'm done infusing. So you can see the infusion has gone to here already. Um, infusions like this don't take very much resin. Also, you notice that I keep stirring the resin. It's never a bad thing to constantly stir the resin. And I'll just be quiet and let the res resin flow and when it gets done, I'll clamp it off and move on to the next one. Resin flow is all the way to here, and it's kind of hard to see, but it has saturated the fabric at this point. So the resin flows faster this direction than it does down, obviously, because it's flowing through the flow media. Uh, if this were a warmer day, it's now February, uh, the resin would be slightly less viscous and would uh, go down into the fabrics a, a little easier. Um, but since this is an epoxy-based resin, it's uh, about the best we can do. I'm about 80% done with the part. You can see that it pulls a little better here. Uh, the reason for that is because the tube here is centered and we don't actually have resin flow here, but you can see it's not a problem. In fact, what you don't want to do is have resin flow too fast, because if you flow too fast, you can actually trap air bubbles inside your part, which is, you know, for cosmetics, 
maintenance reasons isn't very good and also for structural reasons. So you can see I've flown resin all the way to here. And you can kind of see the darkened outline of where the fabric has saturated up until here. You can see we're relatively bubble free. It's a good bag. Nice solid vinyl bag. And I've completely saturated all the way here. I'm just going to let this corner get good because these are for test strips. Uh, eventually going to go